Okay, I don't think it's gonna rain, but I'm bringing the umbrella just in case since the weather has been wacky over the past few days. Every time I'm about to fly the drone, nope, it starts raining. Although, it seems like it should uh, last in terms of the sunlight. Lots of clouds and stuff though. I'm curious in seeing if there's been drastic changes with the plants and stuff since it's been raining so much. This is one of those days today where it seemed like the news and stuff were all over the place. I was interested in a bunch of stuff. The first thing I tried to catch up on was that NAB show, which is basically showing more stuff like electronics and items more geared towards people who do things, I guess, like film and stuff. For a company like DJI, they announced things like a DJI Force Pro and as well, what was this here? The DJI Master Wheel. It's more for things to control things like the camera, I guess, wirelessly or the gimbal. So again, that makes sense considering the theme of the show which is more towards film and stuff but I would imagine most people were looking for things like the drones but it doesn't seem like anything like that has been announced yet and then there was something about this new Blackmagic compact camera and I was thinking compact is this the definition of compact it looks pretty big like a regular size camera in in some ways especially once you attach the lens and stuff I think one of the founders of the CEO or something like that they were joking saying we were thinking about that since it looks too big but then Apparently there's toys like portable battleship or compact battleship, like that thing is still pretty huge, so like why not? For this one it says there's been yet another close call between a drone and an aircraft in the skies above Auckland. Just before 11 a.m. on Monday, a Royal New Zealand Air Force helicopter approaching Wenipal Air Force Base reported seeing a drone just 60 meters from it at a height of 914 meters. Funny enough for me, the thing that caught my attention about this was the video because I guess if I wasn't too caught up on stuff like this, like the news, I would think this video clip would, would be from the actual incident. But this is that one from the US, if you guys remember. The one where people don't know the date, the time where this was flown. It just makes me think, is there just so little, I guess, practical, factual evidence in cases of, I guess, the drones actually being in places like that, that they have to reuse like these sensational clips all the time? That's what I think of anyways, personally, when I read stuff like this. I thought this was an awesome story though. It says Thermal Drone Rescues Nearly Blind Family Dog. A German Shepherd lost in Dubai Desert spotted by aerial drone and reunited with South African expert family. It says Michael Rudolph first became aware that his nearly blind four-year-old German Shepherd was missing in the pitch darkness of the open Dubai Desert. He feared for the worst. Rudolph and his family could barely see beyond their lit base camp south of the outer bypass road in a sandy location. And according to this, it said the dog is 80% blind, so they knew it would freak out. You can't see where it's going in the dark, you wouldn't be able to get back. But this part was really great. It said after a fruitless ground search, Rudolph decided to call in some help from his friend, a drone pilot, a firm specializing in aerial drones. They were great. I asked them for a drone with a thermal camera so that we could spot Stevie's heat source in the middle of the open desert, Rudolph said. It wasn't long before Dorado and team were on the scene and the exponent drone buzzed in the sky equipped with its heat sensing camera that measures warm bodies as red color against a cooler desert floor. It says after combing the desert for hours, a big red blotch appeared on the screen suggesting that Stevie has sauntered off into the night and had eventually laid down in the sand nearly two kilometers away. Drone footage provided by the exponent shows the moment Rudolph walked up to the exhausted dog and were reunited. When we found him, he was utterly exhausted, said Rudolph, who estimated the dog was missing for about six hours in total. Rudolph said, had it not been for the thermal drone, I believe it would have been a bit longer, if not forever. Look at the color of that, it's like so hot on top, it's so cool on the bottom because it went swimming. What an awesome story that is, huh? Again, that's why for me, using things like the drones and those resources, you never know when it will become useful. Like who knows, if they actually flew a drone themselves as well and they had things like, you know, thermal camera, they could save lives, like you just never know when it will happen. And to say people shouldn't ever use that just because you haven't had a need for it yet, that's the wrong way to do it in my opinion. You have to think of everything too, like the positives as well.
what's up there. And then I read about this one, which is kind of interesting because just yesterday I talked about that YouTube Kids app that they're releasing to be kid friendly. But apparently, they are going to potentially be fined billions for collecting data on children. That's like, what is this about? As it says here, YouTube should be fined billions for illegally collecting children's data, privacy group claims. In a complaint filed to the Federal Trade Commission on Monday, a coalition of more than 20 advocacy, consumer, and privacy groups claimed that Google's video platform is violating U.S. child protection laws by collecting personal data on users aged less than 13 years old. Although this is kind of an interesting statement, uh, basically for Google or YouTube to defend itself. It said, protecting kids a top priority for YouTube. YouTube defines its main site as a platform for viewers aged 13 years or older while directing younger children to its YouTube Kids app, which contains a filtered set of videos to show appropriate content and ads. The distinction between YouTube's main site and its standalone app for young children is especially relevant because of the laws in place concerning disclosure and parental consent. The coalition argues that the Alphabet-owned site had actual knowledge. They are trafficking personal information of children under 13 and as a result are breaching the COPA laws. That's kind of fascinating in many ways on how the company itself would kind of label their platform as it's not for kids, it's for 13 years and older. Because when usually, I would imagine most people when they think YouTube, they're thinking uh, kids, for example, doing stupid things, if that's what you want to say, quote. Because usually when people are talking about various topics, I mean, if you think of someone talking about it on a TV, like show, versus something on a YouTube, what is your first reaction? It's probably like, oh, it's some random kid or something doing this, right? Versus something on the TV, it's like, it's the professional. So it's kind of interesting how they say it's only meant for people that are 13 and up. I mean, even most of the popular channels are popular because of the kids watching them. I mean, it's not a coincidence that a lot of the popular stuff, they're just crazy antics, like say video game stuff. I mean, it's not a coincidence. And to say like, I don't know, it's a, it's a little, it's a little stretching it if the company in general, things like, you know, kids aren't watching it regardless of your uh, policies or whatever, because the majority of the audience is kids, I would imagine, like for most of the videos. Oops, looks like I left my filters out of the pack, just the one that I left on the drone. Okay, let's see if I, I'm kind of limited to what I can capture in a proper lighting. Ah, couldn't really capture it very well because I didn't have the right filter. I'm no lawyer, but that would be interesting to see if that actually holds up, like for people to say, hey, we have a a clear policy here like you have to sign this and agree with it but would that hold true if like say let's pretend the company fully knew that the majority of the audience and all that were kids are ignoring like the whole process like would that hold true still in terms of them protecting themselves in that way this definitely is the year of the data controversy now I'm just waiting for the story to come out where Maybe us using paper money has our fingerprints and everything and we're being tracked that way. That seems to be the way things are going this year anyways in terms of data and privacy and all that. See you guys later.